UConn fans, this is Chris Broder, and you are listening to a special episode of the UConn Insider Podcast. I'm joined today uh, in our little studio um, by a special guest, um, Mark Lev, the managing director of the Fenway Sports Management, um, the group behind football at Fenway, which of course um, you know pertains to us this year. Um, it includes a UConn versus BC football game on November 18th. Mark, welcome. It's great to have you here. Good to be here. Thank you. So we're going to talk about, um, you know, the football and the sort of the logistics involved with putting on an, an event like this. But I wanted to kind of start with a little background. You know, I understand you're a New England guy through and through, right? I did. I born born and raised. Uh, the, yeah. Went away to college up in Burlington, Vermont for four years and then came back and got into the sports business. Cool. And... Uh, so school at um, UVM, right? Yes. And then uh, I, I read in an interview somewhere that one of your first jobs, right, was you, you worked for the Boston Celtics during the, the Red Auerbach uh, days? I did. I was a uh, unpaid intern for a year working for the Celtics and uh, it did a variety of things, one of which was driving Red Auerbach around. That's pretty cool. Which was a uh, great, great experience. So you must have some great sort of uh, behind-the-scenes story, uh, yeah, stories, just sort of seeing him, you know, Away from the court, just how he was as uh, just a, a guy on a day-to-day basis. He was, uh, I do, and he was an amazing man, and uh, you know, always one of those people that got you know would see something and get to the bottom of it. Could cut right to the chase. Yep. Uh, great, great person to be around and to and to learn from. Cool. Growing up. Uh, in Mass, were you just a, a big fan of all the local sports teams? Sox, I was. Patriots, Celtics, Bruins even, yeah, absolutely. too? Absolutely. In fact, I was talking, I was at the Red Sox game yesterday and happened to be sitting with Peter Gammons watching the game. Okay. And we were talking about, I don't know how, how we got onto the subject of hockey, but I remember as a young kid watching the Bruins, the Jerry Cheevers and Bobby yep. Orr days and, you know, sneaking a TV into my room at home, <laughs> black and white television, watching on Channel 38, so... Was a fan of all the all the Boston sports teams and felt really lucky to ultimately go work for one of the teams that I rooted for for many years as a kid. Did you play sports growing up? Or? I did. I played um, um, football. I ultimately played soccer and actually went to uh, started my college career playing soccer at UConn, as a matter of fact. Okay. And then transferred to the University of Vermont. So had uh, some time playing for Joe Maroney. Well, that's awesome. I didn't even know that. Back that's great. in uh, back in 1980, long time ago. So another little uh, connection here. You know, playing for Joe, obviously successful program there, won a couple national championships. Um, did you, as you were in college and stuff, was, was the plan always to sort of work in the sports uh, marketing or sports management arena, or did you have? Uh, my mother wanted me to be a doctor. Okay, <laughs> so you went a totally <laughs> and my brother direction. to be a lawyer. Yeah. Uh, when I when I realized after probably failing organic chemistry that that wasn't in my future, I uh, decided if I wasn't going to be able to play uh, sports as a for a career, the next best thing would be able to work in the business. And actually, okay. my first job was working for what was then the Vermont Reds, which was the since. Cincinnati Reds AA affiliate that had just started in Burlington, Vermont when okay. I was up there. So that was my introduction and met some people that led to an introduction to the Celtics and then we were off from there. And then what's sort of the path from there to your current job? Any, any more uh, local jobs in sports? Or? Uh, I had a brief stint working for a sports marketing company um, based out of New York that actually did a lot of work for the Red Sox and that's pretty much how I was introduced to Fenway and and the organization and ultimately left that sports marketing company to go work for the Red Sox right around the time the team was sold back in 2001. Okay. Um, I was working in a consulting role and uh, not long after the new group came in, um, they started Fenway Sports Management, which is a sister company of the Red Sox. Yeah. And I jumped over and started working there when the, when the company was conceived. Well, that's cool. So you've really been there from sort of, uh, you know, the ground level of them. You know, this ownership group, obviously, they have a lot of, you know, non-baseball ventures. They've done so much with the ballpark itself. And, you know, as we're going to kind of talk about, they've, they've used Fenway Park as not just a baseball venue, but so many other cool things have come along, you know, over the last few years. Big air competitions. Right. Uh, Frozen Fenway, which, of course, um, UConn Hockey played as part of that. That was earlier this year. Right. Um, 
tell me a little bit about sort of your day to day. Do you have like an office at the ballpark, or are you guys headquartered off site somewhere? We're right across Yaki Way, okay. um, uh, right above the souvenir store. Actually, okay. for those people that are familiar yep, with yep. Uh, the souvenir store, um, we've been there for I think about the past nine years or so. Um, you know, we're about thirty-seven people. Our organization is thirty-seven people, and it's been great to um, to have grown from an organization of two people who shared a table about the size of this to what we are today. And you know, we're we're very fortunate to have a, uh, be led by an ownership group in John Henry and Tom Werner that's very forward thinking and entrepreneurial and really gives us uh, the the latitude to create things like Big Air yeah. or hockey at Fenway and um, or to, to buy a NASCAR team or to sure. buy a soccer club yeah. in Liverpool. So um, I think if in 2004 you told me that we would be doing everything that we're doing today, I would have looked at you like you have three <laughs> heads, but it's been a great ride so far and I'm sure uh, it's going to be a great ride in the future too. And I imagine, you know, for a New England guy, a Massachusetts guy like yourself, um, it's got to be sort of a dream come true to go to the to Fenway Park and sort of, you know, that's your office. Um, are there a lot of just sort of pinch me moments that come along with yeah, the job the, through the years? There definitely are. You, you know, the baseball season is a long season and you're at 81 games over the course of the year. And uh, but every once in a while, you have to remind. I have to remind myself is this isn't too bad. Yeah. You know, a lot of people would probably give their right arm for a job like this, but um, it's been it's been great, and I've been obviously fortunate enough to have experienced a championship with the Celtics and yeah. three championships with the Red Sox, and there's nothing better than that. Yeah, it's been just sort of a, an incredible run. You include the Patriots too in, in that, even though that's not part of the Fenway Group, but. Uh, you know, just Boston has been just, you know, blessed with all these championships over the last decade plus. It's been really incredible. My kids have no idea. They <laughs> think it's routine for Boston sports teams to be winning yeah, championships. Yeah. They yeah. do not know the pain that we've gone the through pre, over the, the years. The pre-2004 Red Sox, right. it's almost like long forgotten at this point. But, uh, you know, they were the team. You know, you look at some of these other playoff clubs in, in the mix right now. The Red Sox were that long-suffering group for so long. And now, uh, you know, I guess fans have gotten kind of spoiled over these last few years. But, uh just uh, I'm curious about sort of the um, the day to day routine of your job. Do you, do you also supervise like when there's concerts in the ballpark too? Is that sort of uh, fall under your purview also? Or? Not not uh, directly. Okay. Um, you know our our business is really focused on three areas. We are a, um, a sales agency, so we're responsible for selling sponsorships for the Red Sox and for the other properties that Fenway Sports Group owns, Liverpool, yep. New England Sports Network. Um, and the other properties that Fenway Sports Management is licensed to represent, so Boston College Athletics, the, the Dell Technologies Golf Championship. We actually um, work with LeBron James on yep. all of his off-the-court business uh, ventures. Um, so there's that side of our business. We also have a, a kind of a fledgling consulting and events business, working with brands that are doing things in sports. And then we have our events business that is separate from the concerts. It's the, the special events that come into the ballpark, like the big air, yep. like football, like Irish hurling, yeah. hockey, um, and, and things of that nature. The big concerts that come in, is the, those are Live Nation promoted okay. events, and they basically come in and rent out the ballpark. And those, those events have been terrific. And they were really, going back to 2003, one Bruce Springsteen concert was really the first step in opening Fenway Park up to events other than baseball. Yeah. And now we can look back at over 70 concerts. Right. And Rolling Rocky, Stones, four times. Pearl Jam, Foo Fighters, all those exactly. guys. Country concerts. Yep. Um, it's, it seems like... Uh, and those sort of get folded into the mix even during the season. The Sox are on the road, and you're, you guys are able to, you know, use the ballpark for stuff like that. Logistically, um, it would seem like, you know, turning Fenway into a football field, as it has been used for in the past, wouldn't seem to be, you know, the hardest thing in the world. Obviously, you put a hockey rink in there. That's That can be a little bit tougher, more of an undertaking there. But what's what's sort of involved is is there someone on like the grounds crew that's going to have to put sod down over the infield how, how do you guys prepare a baseball stadium for football yeah we uh, you know our mvp is dave meller who's okay. the groundskeeper at fenway and he's the person that uh is responsible for um uh, converting whether it's for a concert in season or for hockey or football out of season there's a little bit more breathing room and latitude when we're out of season yeah. and for an event in November right. but um, they will start uh, probably next week beginning the transformation which what you're right for football it's not a massive transformation like building a hockey rink it's putting sod down over the infield dirt lasering down the pitchers mound 
bringing in the goalposts and lining the field. And mm-hmm. I don't mean to make it sound like it's easy. Well, no, uh, but, but I, it's I know not, hockey's it, a big undertaking because you gotta. I mean, exactly. you're literally trying to keep ice ice <laughs> for the or, or building a 150 foot high ski ramp right, in the middle right. of Fenway Park. That's right. a big undertaking. Yeah. So I think. Uh, a football field is probably, Dave is probably, you know, that's nothing. <laughs> yeah. Um, do the dimensions of Fenway make it tricky at all? Because obviously, you know, we know how quirky it is from a baseball standpoint, but, you know, how does the field sort of, I think I've seen a map where it's like starts at home plate and goes out into right field pretty much. And yeah, the end zones are located in front of the bullpen and in front of the third base dugout, and it, it obviously it fits. Um, some we, we did some renovations at Fenway during the offseason last year, one of which was uh, making the bullpen walls retractable, which okay. they hadn't been in the past. So there's actually more runoff space now mm-hmm. behind the end zone that's out in, out in right field. Um, one interesting kind of quirky thing is that we put both teams on the same sideline okay. so that the sight lines from the box seats on the right field on the first baseline yeah. aren't obstructed view seats. So well, that um, is if you think back to if you watch the Notre Dame BC game yeah, uh, back ago. in 2015, mm-hmm. you would have seen both teams. And they make there are certain considerations that the referees make for players subbing in just mm-hmm. because of that uh, because of that um, kind of unique feature. But beyond that, the you know Fenway is a great venue to watch football. Um, the seats on top of the Green Monster yeah. are spectacular. The anything in the the, the State Street Pavilion are great mm-hmm. seats. So um, it's a it's a great place to watch a football game. Sure, and uh, you know there's a rich history there. I don't know if everybody knows this, but you know BC has played I think over 70 games there. Um, BU has had games Dartmouth, and of course they're going to be part of the series too. A lot of New England teams are playing in the series. And we're talking, this goes back like 100 years, it's almost as old as the ballpark itself. They've had football games there. And then, of course, when the Pats joined the AFL, this was one of their original homes, right? Like exactly. This was, the, they, in, the, in the 60s, the Patriots played at uh, Fenway. There's a great football legacy yep. uh, that, um, much like the other several of the other sporting events that we've had at Fenway, we want to bring those back to life. Sure. Be it Irish hurling, which we're having this year, which was played back in the day. Soccer was played at Fenway Park back in the day to sort of bring that back. Um, but but football uh, it probably has the richest history at Fenway. Mm-hmm. To, to your point, a lot of games have been played there. So, um, you know, we were able to relive some of that in 2015 with the Notre Dame Shamrock Series. And to be able to have three games, college games this year, along with uh, Thanksgiving Day yeah. high school football games, uh, you know, we're just continuing that tradition. Yeah, I think I saw somewhere where Robert Kraft has said that going to those old AFL Patriots games, that's kind of where he got inspired. He's watching games play out at Fenway, and he's thinking, you know, maybe if I own this, the team someday, this is what I would do. Um, so, like you said, just so much history there, and you guys are, uh, you know, paying homage to that. Um, do, long term, is there a hope maybe that the way that Yankee Stadium has the pinstripe bowl, maybe that's something Fenway could have in the future, I don't know, Green Monster Bowl, something like that? <laughs> no, that's clever. I like that. <laughs> Um, look, we, we see football as uh, it's, it's, a, it's a great time of year, November, uh, to have um, when Fenway is available for this. And we are exploring uh, other games at Fenway. You may have read that we actually bid to have the Army-Navy game mm-hmm. at Fenway uh, as part of the cycle of games that came up. Unfortunately, uh, the game is going to stay down in Philly and Baltimore, but we are exploring opportunities. We haven't we haven't ruled out exploring a bowl game, but um, you know there there are a lot of opportunities to to bring football to Fenway and uh, celebrate the New England schools, and then hopefully you know play some games with nationally recognized teams as well. Sure. Um, let's talk about the game itself. Obviously, UConn is, uh, I think they're the third and final game, right? The yes. First, it's uh, Dartmouth and Brown. Dartmouth-Brown on Friday night, the 10th. Okay. Uh, UMass uh, is hosting Maine on Saturday afternoon, the 11th. And then the UConn-BC game, where UConn is the home team uh, on at 7 o'clock on the 18th. Right. Um, can you, is there anything you can divulge about sort of uh, pregame festivities or any events that you have planned sort of around the games themselves? I think much like for a baseball game or any other sporting event, the, the neighborhood will be alive yeah. and festive. Yeah. Um, you know, the schools will be doing their own thing in some of the, either in the ballpark or some of the neighboring establishments, but uh, uh, there'll be a lot of buzz in sure. the neighborhood. Nothing formal outside the ballpark, uh, but uh, I think anybody that comes up will, will find a good time. 
Yeah, I was just kind of wondering. I know David Ortiz, he just signed with you guys, right? He's in, in yes. uh, this past month. I was wondering if maybe we could get like a big poppy coin toss or something. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I haven't thought about that, but I'm not sure if he's going to be in town. But uh, they'll, you know, it, it is a UConn home game, so yeah. it's their game presentation. So right, right. Um, probably a lot of what you see take place at Rentschla for their home games will be replicated. Uh, will be replicated at Fenway. Sure. You mentioned him before, you know, working with a guy like um, LeBron James, you know, such a, he's a sports marketing icon at this point. It transcends what he does on the court. And now you guys have brought David into the fold. He's been such a natural with, uh, you know, commercials and things like that. Um, that must be exciting for you guys to bring a guy like, you know, David Ortiz. He's, in. Yeah, he and he's great. And, um, you know, he's really going to be um, uh, playing, taking on dual roles, really. He's going to be an alumni ambassador for the ball club, much like Jason Veritek and Pedro Martinez and Tim Wakefield are. Uh, but for Fenway Sports Management, he's going to be a uh, uh, an ambassador for us as well, um, working with us with our corporate partners. And um, uh, it, we've already been, you know, had some great events with him right out of the gate and he, yeah. he's he's as exactly in person as you would expect to see him he's a uh, he's lovable he, he meets our clients he gives them a big bear hug <laughs> and he's he's a terrific guy yeah i mean you see him on he's doing tv for these playoff games and he's been a natural at that they, they've been putting like a batting helmet on him i think that's like his prediction helmet or something but he's been him and seeing him and a-rod is so strange if you're a red sox fan to see them you know sort of uh not as strange if it was jason veritek and a-rod but well that would be <laughs> that would be a little different for sure um any other fun uh, stories you can share you know from behind the scenes with being around david kind of like in the vein of those old red r back stories or Nothing, nothing yet. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, like he's going to be with us for a long time, so I'm sure there'll be some uh, good stories to come. I, you know, I, I obviously watched him play for many, many years, and you knew, you know, obviously, you had an opinion of David. His reputation uh, was impeccable, and uh, you know, just a, a man of the community, a man of the people. And now that we've gotten to work closer with him and see him, you know, in in a, in a setting like this. It just it, it's at the next level. He's really sure. terrific and uh, is going to be a great ambassador for us and obviously for the Red Sox. Sure. Well, just to wrap up here, um, you know, we'll, we'll get the details out there again. November 18th is the UConn-UMass game. Um, are there still uh, tickets available? There are tickets look? available and very easy. Just log on to redsox.com slash gridiron. And tickets to the UConn game are there, as are tickets to the other games. So awesome. if there are any Dartmouth, Brown, UMass, yeah. or Maine alums that are listening, they can uh, check out that, those games as well. And there's, uh, like, allotments of student sections too, right? So yes, there that'd are. That would be cool too. Uh, Mark, this was awesome. Thanks so much for your time. And uh, – We'll, uh, we'll, we'll see you out there. This should be a fun event. I think so. Thanks for having me.